Hi there, it's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog and I'm here at the Bath Priory Hotel with head gardener Jane Moore to find out what you need to be doing in your garden now that it's the end of the summer. It's just about the beginning of autumn, the trees are beginning to turn, the last flowers are just dying away. But Jane's garden, because it's in a hotel, the Bath Priory Hotel, it has to look good 365 days a year. And also, as the author of Planting for Butterflies, she's very keen to balance how good the garden looks with making sure that it's wildlife friendly and sustainable. So I'm going to ask her for her top tips that you need to do in your garden if you'd like to keep your garden looking good throughout the winter, preparing to make it look fabulous for next year and also balance it out so that it is wildlife friendly. So Jane, now we've got to the end of the summer, beginning of autumn, trees beginning to go. What's the most important thing we need to do in our garden? I think the first thing I would prioritise is actually doing nothing. I think leaving things to just um, settle themselves down and being very easy on the secateurs. It's so tempting to just start cutting things back willy-nilly. And I actually think that things often look so good as we go into the autumn as they're fading. I quite like plants that die well and so I try and pick plants that do actually go over really nicely. Um, a case in point for that is something like Verbena bonariensis, one of my favourite plants both for wildlife and for late season colour because actually as it goes over, as it finishes, it quite often goes a really nice dark brown, the flower heads, and they often last really well as well. My other favourite plants for beautiful death are um, things like hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are real unsung heroes, I think. Um, they are brilliant shrubs. They're so easygoing and I love an easygoing plant. Um, I don't like plants you have to fuss over too much, but I almost prefer, I love them when they're in flower, but as they go over, as the flowers finish, they often turn, say, from just an, uh, it's quite a dull sort of, whitey green they'll often turn into some really quite nice sort of almost rusty pink shades and I think they're almost better as they're finishing than they are as when they're beginning. Well it's rather nice to hear that actually doing nothing is the best thing to do at this time of year but once we've done a bit of nothing I think we might have to do something so what would you say is the next most important job? My next job after nothing would be a little bit of gentle cutting back. It'd also be, I'd, almost by way of doing that, I tend to go around and think, is there anything that I actually want to take cuttings of? Um, it's not the ideal time of the year for taking cuttings, but it's not, you know, it's not impossible to get things to root. So some of the tender salvias, um, uh, some, of the, some of the pelagoniums and things, as you're sort of taking them in, as you're sorting them out for autumn and winter, really easy to take some cuttings now. Another thing that I really like to do as I'm going around and just gently thinking about maybe tidying up a bit is to uh, collect seeds and I collect an awful lot of seeds. We There's something about um, collecting your own seeds. They've grown in your garden, they've grown well, you've selected them, They're, so you're basically you're always honing that variety to be the best variety that you, for, you want for your garden. And um, uh, I quite enjoy that whole sort of process of actually just going and collecting the seeds and making sure that I've got them saved for next year. There's um, some varieties that I've got in this garden that I've bought one packet of seeds in 2007 um, from Thompson and Morgan. And, um, and Thompson and Morgan has done very badly out of me ever since because I've just collected the seed from it year after year after year. So are there any seeds in particular that you would recommend or not recommend because I understand that F1 hybrids, and those are things you will see them on the label in the seed packet, it'll say F1 hybrid, and that because those are specifically bred by seed companies, I understand those don't come out particularly well in seed. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, my favorite seeds to collect that are always so reliably good are um, Amaranthus, uh, Calendula, 
Um, I love collecting my own calendula and again I'll look for the ones that I think are a particularly nice colour. I really like the good rich burnt oranges so I'll, I'll tend to go for those. Um, F1 hybrids there's just no point in collecting seeds. Um, some of the veg seeds I've had really bad luck with. I've grown a few really nice French bean varieties and tried to collect and save the seed, done it all by the book and just had really poor germination rates from them. Them. Things like runner beans, um, however, I've, I've collected the seed year after year and if anything the seeds got bigger and bigger and um, they germinate beautifully. So, um, so those I've had really good success with. But to be honest, it doesn't take much time to collect a few seeds and I think well you know obviously don't go for the ones that you think are going to be really tricky and that you've had poor germination from in the first place but if you've grown things and they've done really well in your garden the chances are if you collect the seed they might do really well again and if they don't if it doesn't work out then hey gardening's all about trying and failing isn't it? So as we get nearer winter what other jobs would you think we should be doing in our gardens? Well, eventually you have got to actually start cutting things back and tidying up. And I do tend to um, do that quite, quite toughly, actually. Um, one of the other things that I tend to do is, is de-leafing hellebores. I often leave de-leafing my hellebores as that sort of, as we get towards Christmas, you know, it's quite a nice job to just tinker away at and take all the old leaves off as the new, um, as the, the flower buds are coming through. The Bath Priory Hotel has got three acres of garden and they're divided up into smaller gardens, each one of which you could call a middle-sized garden. There's a formal garden by the hotel, which is overlooked by the terrace, and that has herbaceous borders and a croquet lawn and lots of lovely little places you can sit. And then the second garden is wilder. It's got a lovely great big cedar of Lebanon tree, which is really old. It has a fallen mulberry tree, which is also really old. And it has swathes of meadow grass as well as formal lawn. And beyond that, there's a vegetable garden. Jane is the author of Planting for Butterflies. And so as well as keeping this a formal garden, which hotel guests can enjoy at all times, she's also very wildlife friendly. And they have a really nice way of treating old or fallen tree trunks. And they've become like sculptures in the garden. I just love the way that this is a mulberry tree, for example, it's fallen over, but actually it's still going on. It's still pumping out leaves and it just looks so pretty. And there are a couple of other fallen leaves and tree trunks around the garden that look like modern sculpture. There's also some little bits of modern sculpture around the garden as well, quietly concealed. You just come across it and then think, oh, what's that? In fact, is that an unexploded bomb? This is an old ash tree which fell down and luckily didn't damage anything when it went. And they've created a really pretty seating area just beyond where it is, but they've left the tree here. Fallen trees are really good for wildlife. They're particularly good for insects. As we're tidying up our gardens, what would we be doing if we want to make sure that we do bear wildlife in mind? I always leave the ornamental grasses, um, I never cut them back until the spring and that's partly because they often look quite nice over the winter anyway but also it does give a lot of little creatures a little bit of nesting material for if they're sort of hibernating a bit over winter a lot of the small sort of mice and things will often make little nests with things like Stipa tenuissima or um, uh, the pheasant grass um, and um, I have actually come across a hedgehog um, that was actually actually just nesting hibernating under a pile of grass and as part of my tidying up I was I had this there was this pile of sort of grassy um, I think it was steeper tenuissima you know perfect and it was just in a bit of a lump and I thought well I've got to take you know tidy that up and I lifted it and there was a lovely hedgehog all curled up underneath it so I plonked it back on top of him. And of course what about bulbs? The bulbs that I tend to plant we plant bulbs every autumn and we always do um pots of tulips and things for the real sort of spring show you know our first national garden scheme event is usually in the spring and so I like to have a sort of really good display of, of tulips and things but we'll also naturalize quite a lot of bulbs and over the years we've naturalized a lot of um, daffodils including the sort of wild daffodil uh, Narcissus pseudo Narcissus and, uh, and created sort of little little spring glades and little sort of like bulb areas. I really like things like um, anemone blander and it's so easy to naturalise and really doesn't cost very much to buy and yet it'll just give you such a good show in the spring.
When I'm naturalising bulbs, I always tend to think that they look brilliant under trees. There's something about trees coming to life in the spring with those sort of lovely fresh greens. And if you've got a little carpet of bulbs underneath, then the whole thing just creates a beautiful scenario. And so the first little glade area we created was actually under an amelanchia, which is one of the quintessential spring flowering trees. And it was partly because the amelanchia looked so beautiful, sort of on the top level, it needed something at the lower level to just really highlight it and that's where we put um, Narcissus pseudo Narcissus, the wild daffodil and um, anemone blander and we've also managed to naturalise some snake's head fritillaries as well which I absolutely adore, probably my favourite native plant, so beautiful. I've got a playlist of tips from garden experts which you can see at the end of this video and if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and thank you for watching. Goodbye.